Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Whale Island. In the last episode, we met the fearless bird Kuvan, who decided that he would join the ranks of our personal creatures. So now, our very first beaked creature is living amongst all of the kitties on the island, but he clearly has taken quite a shining to them. And it's no surprise since their father appears to be the best singer in all the land. If he could impress even the birds with his singing, then he is our most successful mermaid yet. But I hope that Barbus will be a little bit more successful too. Much more so than his poor mother, who only managed to call one creature in her lifetime. She's getting very old though, so she needs to pass that crown over to her son. Now that he's grown his third and final gem, it's the perfect time for him to take control instead. So we'll bring Lapis down to the nest, so she might have just one more baby with her mate, as Barbus stands high atop the stump, gazing over the land, and over all of that tall grass of the savannah too. I'm sure he's quite curious about this place, since this was where his mentor came from, the wise old elder of the savannas, who was unfortunately never quite quick enough to catch up to those bunnies. It seems as if the mermaid's influence has caused a bit of a shift in Tiki's behavior though. He was actually the one catching those bunnies instead, so I guess he's no longer friends with Bunny Kingdom. He has to keep his babies fed though, so maybe that's why. He doesn't want all of those bunnies stealing his family's food. So in memory of the Elder, he'll take those last berries to his mate, and they'll raise just one more child before she passes away. It looks like she even has a couple of berries that she can steal from that bush as well. As Aurora, perhaps, picks up the acorns to offer up to her new little sibling, but also as a bit of a peace offering for Mango's family. It's kind of funny how the two brothers have started families so close to each other, especially because they do come from so different backgrounds. Mango hasn't seen Tiki since he was stolen away by Bunny Kingdom, and Mango himself is quite dedicated to Van Keer's cause. He is a deep in debt with the Scorpion God of the Harvest, so there's no way he's letting any pesky bunnies get past his watch. And this is the perfect time for you to show your stuff, Mango. Scare that bunny away for us. Oh my gosh. What a cheeky little bunny! He stole that berry from right under your nose? Not a care in the world! Oh, poor Mango! He tries to be so intimidating, but unfortunately, the bunnies are just not impressed. Well, maybe Hockey will have a little bit more luck. He does have the scorpion tail, so that alone might be intimidating enough. Poor Lee is the only member of their family now who actually appreciates the bunnies. So he'll have to share all of that stinky juice with these little guys as they hop around the one lone berry bush left by his family's home. Oh my gosh, now he's hiding them away behind the stinky fruits. They really have gotten to you, Lee. They've hopped their way right into your big soft heart. Oh, it looks like we may have unlocked another gene too. I think that's probably the Cracker Jaw, because we were just picking up so many acorns. Yeah, it looks like that's what that was. So now we're only missing access to those wings. But I hope that Kuvan's presence will be enough to maybe call more of his family to his side. More of the feathered variety if we're lucky. Yeah, I'm guessing that he probably came from a similar place as Ananame. Maybe they were even part of the very same family, too. Maybe he was out here looking for her. Though if he did know her from his past, then he would have been very, very young when she disappeared. I suppose he could even offer up some singing pointers for Echo, as he offers to watch after the babies. We'll just have him pick up some of those extra stinky fruits. Oh, did you unlock another gene for us? I'm sure it's nothing new. It was probably that stinky tail. Oh, that is one of my favorite genetics. That would look so cute paired with the purse now. And I think when I try to recreate my penny cat, that is exactly what I'm going to use. With the way the mask is set up, 
I guess we would have to breed white fur onto their babies and then make sure the mask is set as black. It looks like they unlocked yet another gene. Was that one perhaps the ram horns? Something to do with attacking? Well, you guys are on a roll today. Maybe we'll unlock the wings after all. We'll have Kiki come over here to pounce on the meat that Sunny just caught. I feel like she probably has high hopes of being just like her big sister. Perry has proven herself to be quite the capable huntress after all. Though right now she's a little bit distracted. She wants to make sure that Quirk is going to be okay. The poor thing got himself poisoned because he thought that his mischievous ways would be enough to protect him from the toxic berries. So she's going to give him strict orders not to touch those berry bushes any longer. And maybe we'll have him scoot his way over here instead, so we can pick up some more safer food for his family. It doesn't look like we have too many areas to dig up roots, unfortunately. Most of them are located right by the blowhole, so I suppose a raised rock could help us out with that instead. She can finally lend Eclipse a paw, since he so desperately seems to need it. The poor guy can really only crack open these acorns, so he hasn't been able to tend to all of the areas around the blowhole. And I wonder if that might be why we're currently in the middle of a drought? Why our berry bushes haven't been watered in quite so long? So hopefully Gruul and Rezra will be able to help him out enough that our whale will finally bless us with the rains once more. A few of you have mentioned that we should give a name to the whale, which I am definitely all for. This is quite a healthy relationship after all, between our tribe and the whale. Not only is he swimming us off to those distant shores, but we're maintaining the land on his back, so I'm sure that helps him feel more comfortable. A few of you have mentioned names like Neptune and Poseidon, so let me know what you guys think, and we'll make our decision in the next episode. But that should be just about the end of this turn. We might just have the little purse now babies toddle out of the nest, so they can play around with Kuvan on the next turn. Perry will also stay right next to Quirk's side, just to make sure that her purring is still working its magic. Let's see if, hopefully, he's going to heal some of his own wounds. Yeah, looks like he didn't take damage that time. He is still poisoned, but I didn't even see that symbol pop up. Oh, that's a very good sign. It looks like your healing powers might be a little bit more potent than we even realized. But we have some new little babies to meet, including our very final mermaid. And it looks like our very first peacock baby, too. Oh my goodness! Look how grand this baby is! With that giant peacock tail and the big ears. Oh, he's going to be very, very good at attracting new creatures to our tribe. Maybe he'll even be the one to finally bring the wings into our family. Now, the next name on my list is Dasher. So welcome to our tribe, little one. And pretty soon we'll have to find you a suitable stump to set up on too. I know he's not one of our mermaids, but we have to give the peacock tail a try. And now we have a trifecta of fiery stripy babies for the mermaid family. And this one even looks like one of our beloved bananas too, with those lovely brown stripes on her back. Now as for you, the next name on my list is Serena. So welcome to the tribe as well. And I'm sure that your siblings will be very excited to get to know you. You'll be listening to the songs of your big brother, Barbus, as he calls out for a tribe mate. But it seems as if Bunny Kingdom is invading instead. We might have to send your father out to investigate. Let's have him lunge into that tall grass and take out as many as he can possibly reach. Well, there we go. That's going to be a nice big feast for you guys. A great feast for your brand new baby. But also for anybody else who happens to be sniffing around. So we'll have to keep a very close eye on that darkness. Now our tough and intimidating Hawkey might not be quite old enough to go chasing after bunnies himself. But we do have a mole lingering in the area. So I wonder if he could set up for pouncing on that guy instead. 
we'll have him crack open one of these extra acorns and then maybe hide behind the rock. So on the next turn, if he times it right, he should be able to pick up some nice mole meat for his family. I'm sure that Freckles will be glad for the change, but Mango is not going to give up after he scoots on over here to pick up those berries for the Scorpion God of the Harvest. He will try yet again to crack open those pesky acorns. He is not going to give up until he finally makes them his. Now I'm afraid Quirk isn't going to settle for some quiet life just picking from these berry bushes. He is far too mischievous for that. And with his current scorpion tail, I wonder if he might be able to trick Van Keer and Nebula? He almost looks like he was meant to be part of their family, as if he has royal blood coursing through his veins. So perhaps Van Keer could set up a little bit of a betrothal between his sister and Quirk, so they could have some little scorpion-tailed babies to increase the strength of his troops. As long as he doesn't actually try to pick from the poison berries, then there should be no reason why Van Keer should suspect him. So let's plop the nimble fingers into both of their mutation menus, since I feel like that would be super helpful on their line. And we don't have the toxic body yet, right? Yeah, we're quite a ways away from that. So this will be a good way for us to collect more actions too. We have just enough nesting material to even build a nest right between all of these different berry bushes. So you guys are quite lucky. Though I think the bunnies might beg to differ. Oh, I can hear them stealing from us from every last corner of the island. The only one who doesn't seem worried at all would be Lee, who's still content to pick all of those stinky fruits and maybe a couple of berries where the bunnies are willing to spare him some extra food. I guess because he's on their side, they're willing to pay him with a few extra morsels. Perry is going to be so sad now that she's found herself abandoned by her own brother. She thought they would travel the entire island together side by side, but his mischievous ways have just gotten the best of him. She probably feels like she should have saw it coming. She knew from the beginning that he was only interested in trouble. That's why they ended up going to the dark side of the island. And I wonder if Kuvan might actually like to bring the babies over there too. He could show them his old home, where he used to peck around for all sorts of roots, and where he once roosted on the tallest stump in the land. So we'll have them switch places with Kiki and Sunny, they can once again take care of the bunny hunting. Oh my gosh, Sunny can jump so far. That was practically the entire width of the whale. She is definitely suited to the life of a huntress. I feel like Kiki could really learn a lot from her. And that frees up our stump. So we can take Marco the manticore and Cole as well. And have Kuvan show them his old home. I feel like this was probably where he used to live, since we hadn't explored this place at the time. This was probably the most peaceful place for him to rest his head. And since he doesn't have wings to sit high atop the trees, at least he can gain a little bit of comfort from being high on the stump instead. Now I think we just have a couple more of these acorns to pick up. Maybe Rezra can come around to the other side and try her hand at this one too. It looks like she is going to be just as determined to pick up those acorns as Mango is. Maybe she's even hoping to impress Eclipse if she can manage to crack open one of those shells. Now last but not least, we'll try yet again Van Keer to call a brand new member to your troops. But at least your army is going to be growing anyway, whether or not we find a new wanderer to invite. Yeah, it seems like everything might be quiet on Whale Island. I'm afraid that our numbers might be a little bit too large right now, and that could be causing less wanderers to spawn in the area. So we'll have to be careful that we don't have too many babies. But at the same time, this one over here is going to be very, very helpful to Fankir's cause. Looks like all of your mischievous ways have paid off for you, because now you have a little fiery-maned scorpion baby in the nest. 
Unfortunately, no nimble fingers, but he'll still be great at collecting the berries nonetheless. So the next name on my list is Akira. Welcome to our tribe, little one. And we'll see if we can't take care of all of these bunnies. Oh my gosh. Has a bunny spawned on like literally every single one of these burrows? Oh, this is not good. I mean, maybe it's good for our hunters. That means that Gruel can jump over here and try to swipe up a few. And I suppose Perry could go chasing after this one instead. Which will bring her under Kufan's careful gaze. Now he does have a love for the purse now creatures. So I wonder if our little bird might find himself smitten with Periwinkle? Maybe we could actually start a family between these two. I'm very curious to see if the bird beak or the purr snout is going to end up being more dominant. So we'll have to see if we can set up their mutation menus for some really healthy babies. Oh my goodness. It looks like all of that food may have attracted some attention after all but from somebody that we really don't want poking around our tribe. Tiki, I think you're going to have to get rid of this rogue male for us, so he doesn't end up causing your daughter any trouble. We'll leave him with that extra turn, and perhaps Barbus could descend from his throne for now, just to pick up all of that meat. That way it won't be quite so enticing to the rogue males. Oh, and that reminds me... We were going to have Hockey try to take down this mole. So if we have a couple of our creatures use up their turns, we should be able to surprise it from behind. Maybe one more turn from his mother, and now you should be able to pounce and pick up some of our very first mole meat. Not too many of our creatures have been skilled enough to catch those tricky critters. So you're a whole new type of hunter on our island. And I'm sure the ever-dashing Dasher is getting quite curious about that empty throne. We'll bring him over this way, so maybe when he has a little bit more energy, he'll be able to investigate the stump for himself. Assuming that Barbus is still far out in the savannas, trying to catch all these pesky bunnies. Yeah, there's enough back here to keep him busy for a long, long time. Maybe he could even explore this place to see if anybody is hiding inside. I wonder if that wise elder is on his mind. Maybe he wants to see if he can find his family. I suppose even Vankir is going to be keeping close watch because he won't let anything harm his family. Oh, Quirk, you tricked me with that tale of yours. It just goes to show how good he actually is at his job. But now, unfortunately, he is poisoned again. So at some point, he's going to have to try to flag down one of his siblings so they can heal him with their purring yet again. And something tells me it's not going to be Periwinkle. She has been tricked far too many times. And she has a bit of a different path in store for her. What with her brand new suitor. So for their family... Let's try to get one step closer to creating a little penny cap. We'll go ahead and fill their mutation menu with the stinky tail, I suppose. We can go ahead and plop that into Kuvan's slot as well. He does have the peacock tail in his inactive traits, so if that gets pulled out instead, I certainly wouldn't complain. We'll drop the white fur into both of their second slots, because we'll want the white fur to be their base, and the black fur to be their mask. It'll take a few generations to take shape, but we'll get there one step at a time. So go ahead and breed with Periwinkle, and then when she has a little bit more energy on the next turn, we'll have her make her way all the way over to this nest. Right at the edge of the ports, actually. I'm sure our tribe is starting to get antsy by now. They've been here for quite some time and they're ready to seek out some new adventures. One nice thing about these ports is that they're absolutely massive, so we should be able to take quite a few creatures with us once we are finally ready to move. Oh my gosh! Our first Baryena? Oh my goodness! Right in the middle of our little personal babies too? Oh, Marco... 
Marco, our fierce little manticore, must have caught his attention. Honestly, they almost look like they could be related. Maybe the Sparagina thinks that our extremely intimidating Marco is one of their children, but he is going to be in for quite the surprise. Actually, Marco should be able to poison the Baragina, and that's going to help us out quite a bit. But now he needs to run away as fast as he can, because the Baragina is going to be hot on his trail. We might as well have Cole land a good hit in too, because I don't think he would want to leave the Baragina without some sort of revenge. And then it'll be time for Kuvan to guide his mate safely over to a nest. Though both of these are definitely not going to be safe. And we don't have quite enough nesting material to build our own. So maybe she could actually return home. Oh, we could have her go all the way over here. Way off on the corner of the whale so she can gaze off to sea. And right by his eyeball too. Honestly, I think Kuvan is going to stay right here. He knows that he has a duty to protect these children. So he's not going to let them out of his sight. And if he does end up getting injured, if the Baryina decides to turn on him instead, since he is the king of the hill at the moment, at least the babies will be able to heal his wounds with their purring. Luckily, it seems as if the rogue male has probably passed away in the tall grass. He's nowhere to be found right now. So maybe we could actually lead little Dasher over to the throne before we end up the episode. Serena could even be the one. Maybe she's chasing after the bunnies too. So she can go ahead and snatch this one up for us. And then Dasher can ascend to the top of the stump to call out his first song. So with the peacock tail, that should increase his attractiveness, which should also theoretically make it much easier for him to call wandering creatures to his side. So maybe this is the ticket. The missing link for those legendary bird wings. We'll just have to hope that Barbus doesn't get too jealous if he ends up hearing Dasher's songs. I can't imagine he would be too happy to be replaced. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!